Whenever I hear that chime, I always want to do the commercial about spaghettis and meatballs. Is there anybody else that gets that going on in their head? It's kind of like somebody sent me on uh, Facebook the picture of the little girl with the dog and he's pulling down her pants in the back. Anybody remember what commercial that was? Yes! <laughs> and I said, I'm dating myself, but I know which one that is. So it is time for our announcements and our commercials. So if you're ready, we've got a few. Uh, we are in need of pew porters. Now everybody says, what is a pew porter? A pew porter is people who maintain and look at the pews and keep them looking good after we've had worship and everybody else has left their trash in them. So uh, <laughs> basically it's somebody to help clean up, lift up the bulletins, do those kind of things, uh, make sure that the hymnals are in there and the um, you know, um, prayer cards, offering envelopes, little, little pencils and that kind of stuff, and to pray, most importantly, to pray over the pews so that when we have worship on Sunday morning, everything looks nice. So um, you can work with the team or you can work individually. You can do that after the 11 o'clock service. You only do once a month. Um, and basically, you are the one that's in charge of that. If you want to do it with two other people, it makes it a lot faster, and you can pray as you go along, and it's a lot of fun, actually, because you can sit and say, oh, I know, that's where Linda sits. Mm -hmm. Let me see what I can do. <laughs> She's looking at me uh, to pray for her, or that's where Mary Jack sits, you, you know, and you start praying, or you might even get to the place where I remember this is where Alma sat, and you get to that place where your heart starts praying for John. So it becomes a really a moving time as well as a time to prepare our sanctuary. So if you're interested in being on a team or being one who would do, you know, maybe the first Sunday of the month or the third Sunday of the month, let me know and we'll make sure we line you up for that. Also, we are doing a mission, uh, backpacks and haircuts. Because we do not have the school list yet, we are in the process of gathering just funds for that. We are going to, we have one haircut person. We're looking for other haircut people, or maybe we have two. Um, and we are going to be doing that again in August. We will be filling backpacks and getting materials once all that gets together. And so if you either want to volunteer to hand them out, you want to volunteer to put them together, you want to volunteer to, to help with that whole process during that day, or prior to, or going shopping to pick up the, the goods, let us know. Call Melissa Gardy. Her phone number is in the bulletin. Give her a call and tell her what part of that you want to be. Also, uh, the, the, the flowers today are in memory of Vernon and Myrtle Watkins. Who knew Myrtle and Vernon? Yeah, I figured you might. Uh, Butch and Darlene uh, donated those, so if you see them, tell them you're praying for them and that they're a part of your heart. Also, if you have plastic bags, Bella Bray is trying to get her gold uh, Girl Scout pin. And to do that, she's got to collect, I think it, how many tons is it for a bench? Can you remember? Was it 500? And she's only up to about 100. So bring, bring in all your plastic bags or the wrapping on your toilet paper, you know, that plastic inside your cereal boxes, empty that out real good. Uh, Ziploc bags that you've used and you've rinsed out, that type of stuff. Please bring those in and put them in the box out here. Also, we do not have our chancel choir today. Um, so we are still looking for help with that, are we not, Laurie? Or with the altar call, if you're somebody who plays an instrument, or you want to do a solo. But you got to sing at least loud enough so that it's not so low we can't hear you. Okay, so uh, we do have a good solo today. Noah's going to bring us one that's really awesome. So those are all the announcements I have. I do want to ask you to continue to be in prayer for our kids because VBS starts tonight. We're doing what we call pod VBS, which means that we're actually going to be having them in houses. We've got 12 or 14 kids uh, going to each individual house. They're going to be having the snack and the outdoor activities and all of that. We planned that for two reasons. One, at the time we started planning, we had that disease called, 
COVID. And so we weren't sure if we would even be able to meet with, you know, at any, any time. But we also found out that because we can do that, we can reach out to people in the neighborhood we've never reached out to before. And we have some people who are not members of our church, kids that are not members of our church, that are in those neighborhoods that are going to get to meet some of our kids, and hopefully that will start bringing them to church. And that is our goal for that. So we just want to praise God for that, continue to pray for them, pray for the volunteers, and um, now let us center ourselves as we focus on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. share together our call to worship. We are branches rooted in the vine of Christ. We come because we seek to abide in Christ. The branches that remain in the vine bear much fruit. If we abide in Christ, then Christ's words will abide in us. May we grow wonderfully as we abide and God tends us lovingly. Amen. Father God, we come today knowing that we are the branches and you are the vine. Tend our soil and bring forth new life that we might bear your fruit in this world. Allow us to be a loving people who love and care and project the glory of Christ in all we do. We pray this in Jesus' holy name and all the people say amen. Please remain standing as we sing together our opening hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing.
we share together our affirmation of faith. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. Glory be to the Father. Is there something we need to address? For the Patrick family, let us pray. Father God, we just come before you, and we know that times and places are under your design. Sometimes we don't understand why things happen the way they do, or what the purpose is. But we know that your word is truthful and it promises us that you will never leave or forsake us. When we walk through the fire, we will not be burned and when we walk through the water, we will not drown. But it also says, Lord, that you have numbered the times and places for our lives. That you know each day before one comes to be. So we just pray for this Patrick family. We ask, Lord, that you would embrace them with your grace, that you would surround them with all that they need, whether it be medical or financial or just support from community. And we ask, Lord, that you would be with those who are in that place that can reach out to them, can love them, and can help to grant your peace. And we pray this all through the holy name of Jesus Christ, and all the people say, Amen.
Scripture lesson this morning comes from John 15, John chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine, vine dresser. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that did bear, does bear fruit, he prunes so that it may be even more fruitful. You, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch, no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you may bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come together. We worship you this morning. God, I pray for the words I'm about to speak. God, I pray that you let my words fall away and let yours flow through me. Pray over the people here in this room that they may hear something that they need to hear this morning. We love you, God. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right. So, I know what you're probably thinking. Ooh, it's Noah preaching again. I wonder how short he'll keep the sermon this time. Well, what I can promise you is that by the time we're done... 185 will still be open so you can get some breakfast or something. But let's talk relationships, shall we? Some of you are going, oh, this is interesting. So show of hands, how many of you are married? OK, most everyone in the room. Uh, how many of you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend? Okay, I see a couple hands that also raised that you were married, so I think there should be concern, some concern there. <laughs> right, okay. So, see, 
Funny enough, I fall into neither of those categories. I'm not married, and I don't have a girlfriend either. So I kind of fall into the weird category of ministers. Some of you are probably going, oh, got that right. <laughs> but it seems kind of like a prereq for graduating Bible college that you are married. But unlike most men who graduate from Bible college, I did not confer an MRS degree upon anybody. And th this was honestly something that I wrestled with in college. See, before I went to college, I genuinely did not care about whether or not I was in a relationship. I didn't. But that all changed my first semester at Johnson. And there's kind of a stigma at Johnson University, where I went to school, of uh, being in a relationship. And that stigma is, everyone else is, why are you not? And the school actually used to be called Johnson Bible College, so you know what a lot of us like to call it? Johnson Bridal College. Because it's that bad. But there's even this trope on campus, ring by spring, where basically you get a girlfriend in the fall, you have to put a ring on her by spring. And then you got the rest of us who are going, I mean, the only, there, there's only one type of date that I can get, Photoshop update. So I can, maybe I can Photoshop my way into a date, I don't know. But, but, the, but so freshman year, I fell into this mentality that I need to get a girlfriend now. Because obviously there's no chance that I'll get a girlfriend outside of college, right? But in all honesty, it became a major source of discouragement for me. My mindset became, if I was not in a relationship, I was not worth much. I, I said, God, I see all these happy couples around me. Why do I not have that? And that's around the time that I found this passage of scripture. Or, or better said, um, I, this passage of scripture finally stuck out to me. But it's funny. I read it over and over and over again during this time. I must have read it a thousand times. It essentially became a crutch that I leaned upon. But no matter how many times I read it, I never truly understood what it meant. And that's what we're going to be looking at this morning. So like I said, our scripture is John 15, 1 through 11. If you want to turn to that, you can. But this teaching right here is, is one of the reasons why John is my favorite book of the Bible. John is essentially the crazy uncle of gospel writers. See, many scholars agree that the gospel writers essentially bummed off of each other when they were writing their respective gospels. But John is different. There are stories in John that don't show up in any of the other gospels. And each gospel focuses on something different for a different audience. In John's case, he was writing to the Ephesian Gentiles, and the point was to emphasize Jesus' divinity. And this story comes nearing the end of the gospel. At this point in the narrative of John, he and his disciples were in the upper room of the house in Jerusalem, and they were having the Passover meal. And when you get the chance, I would highly recommend reading through the entire, that entire story. It's John 13 through 17. And in chapter 17, he even prays for not just his disciples, but also those who would believe down the line. So I would highly recommend reading through those when you get the time. We're not going to go over that. But at that point, Jesus knew that his time before he was arrested and crucified was near. And he begins to teach his disciples, a teaching found in none of the other Gospels. And when I found John 15, 1 through 11... I knew that this passage was speaking straight to me. But like I said, I must have read it a thousand times, but I didn't truly understand it. See, the reason I loved this passage was verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. See, at that point I thought I could ask God for whatever I wanted, and he would give it to me, no questions asked. At that point, I thought of God as a genie in a lamp. You know, that you kind of rub, and then Robin Williams comes out. 
10,000 years can give you such a crick in the neck for, for those Aladdin fans. But anyway, what, I thought that whatever I asked in his name, it would be granted to me without any questions, even a relationship. But I failed to take into account the first part of that verse. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. Hmm. Hmm. See, Jesus isn't a genie in the lamp, ready and willing to give you anything you want without questions. If it is not God's will, you won't get what you ask for. He makes it clear that when you go to him with a request, there are three things you need to factor in. Your belief, if it is his will, and whether or not you abide in him. How are we doing with this? How are we doing with abiding in the vine? When we read this passage, do we hear what we want to hear? Or do we hear what Jesus wants us to hear? See, there's a difference between being in a relationship with someone where you only go to them when you need something and being in a relationship where you truly and intimately know that person. Let's put it this way. I know who Mo Farah is. Olympic class distance runner, uh, part of the Nike Oregon Project, elite, an elite group of runners be, uh, put together by Nike in, you know, Oregon. Uh, Olympic gold double-double in both the 5,000 and the 10,000 meter races in both 2012 and 2016, the first time since 1976 that that's happened. I know who Mo Farah is. He is a legend upon distance runners, among distance runners. But if I show up to his house one day while he's having a party and say, hey, Mo, so funny story. I actually popped a flat uh, down the road, and I need someone to spot me some cash. Do you think you could do that for me? How well do you think that will go over? Not very well. I wager to say that he'd slam the door in my face and maybe call the cops. So all in all, not a great situation. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you. What does abiding in the vine look like? Well, I'm going to ask you some hard-hitting questions. How often do we pray? And I'm, I'm not talking just like an occasional prayer uh, throughout the day. I'm talking like legit pray, like set aside a time for prayer. How often do you open this book, the living, breathing word of God? And how often do we meditate on what we read? Do I know who Jesus is? And why do I follow Jesus? Is it because of what he gives me? Because that's not abiding. That's like, there's actually another term for that. Plumbing. Or am I following him for who he is? Have I seen and heard enough to trust him with everything? Have you seen his goodness, his mercy, his justice, his compassion, his forgiveness, his kindness, and said to yourself, you know what? I've been chasing after all these things that get, into, get in the way of my relationship with Jesus, but I don't want those things anymore. I think he is worth it. All these other things are temporary, but Jesus is eternal. I know Jesus, the ruler of all creation, and my friend has a plan for my life. So let me ask you this. 
what is that thing that you're going after that's getting in the way of your relationship with Jesus? I was laying in bed during winter break of my junior year. And every year for, and every year for winter break, instead of, uh, doing, instead of doing Christmas and getting a whole bunch of presents, we instead go on a Christmas vacation. That specific year, we went to a resort in Mexico. And I was laying in bed one night. And over the, past, over the prior, previous years, I had been talking to my mentors about my desperation to be in a relationship. And they all unanimously said one thing, abide first, and then everything else will follow. And as I was laying in bed, I was pondering all these things in my head and everything that happened in the past two years. And that's when it hit me, abide. I finally understood what that word meant. Abide in the vine, and then everything else will follow. After a year of misreading this text, I finally understood what it meant, what it truly meant. I recognized that if God wants to bless me with a relationship, that's great. But if he doesn't, that's great. Because I know Jesus. And he is sufficient. Now, am I saying that it's, that it's easy? No. There, there's, there are still times in my life where I wish I had that. But those moments that I have to remember to abide in him first. Everything else will follow after that, but the most important thing is to abide in him. Are we abiding in Christ? Do we know of him, or do we truly know and have a relationship with him? Because I can tell you, abiding is a hard road to follow. It is a long and disorienting process. I, I know, I have been through periods where I don't want to pray, I don't, want to, I, I, I don't want to read scripture, and I want absolutely nothing to do with Jesus. But when we're finally there, when we're finally at that point where we can put aside everything that's been getting in the way of our relationship with Jesus and trust him with those parts of our lives, when we're at that point where we realize that Jesus is better than anything else. When you get to that point, there is freedom. So what does this mean for my life with Christ? What does this mean for your life with Christ? Are we barely getting by chasing after everything that's getting in our way? Or are we abiding in him? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you once again for this opportunity to come together. And God, I, I know that there are probably people in this room right now who have been chasing after things that have been getting in the way of their relationship with you. God, I pray, over those, I pray over those people right now. I pray that you help them realize that they need to abide in you first because that is the most important thing in our lives. And then after that, everything else will follow. God, help them realize that you are sufficient. We love you, God. See in your name we pray. Amen. So as we move into a time of, of prayer, we do have a couple people that we need to keep in prayer. Um, first, we have Lisa Wilson. She is in Riverside Hospital. Uh,
Uh, we still don't know the details of that yet, so whatever's going on there, please pray over her, please pray for health over her, and um, also Junie Page is still at Warwick Forest, and she is coming home on Friday, so please be praying for her as well. And finally, please be praying for our VBS. Pray for the kids, pray for Laura as she leads, and pray for our volunteers as they help out. But that's pretty much all the prayer requests that we have. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we come before you today in need of your healing, in need of your grace, in need of your wisdom. God, I pray over all the prayer requests that you've heard. I pray over Lisa Wilson as she's at Riverside. I pray that you, whatever is going on with her, that you give her health, you give her your protection, and that you also help the doctors who are tending to her. Give them wisdom to treat her in the best way that they know how to. I pray for Junie Page as she's coming home. And I pray over our VBS. I pray over the kids that they may have fun but also hear something that they need to hear. I pray over I pray over Laura as she leads it. Let your words speak through her and help them help her lead VBS in in the best possible way. And I pray over the volunteers as well, that they may make good connections with the, with the kids and also help out in the best way they know how. I pray over our nation's leaders, over the president, that you may give him wisdom to lead this country in the way that you want it to be led. God, I pray over our congressmen and, and senators. Give them wisdom as well. I pray over our leaders on the state and local level. And I pray over the people that are still affected by COVID-19. I pray that you give them health and give them your protection. I pray over the doctors who are, who are still administering the vaccines. And I pray for an, a complete eradication of COVID-19. And God, I pray over all the people in this room and the specific prayer requests that they have as they lift them up to you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, I thank you once again for this opportunity to come together. God, I pray over all the prayer requests that you've heard this morning. Help resolve them in the way that only you know how. God, I thank you for giving us the prayer that you taught us to pray as we pray it now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, we thank you for coming out this morning, whether you're here in the house or online. We're glad that you came. We're going to move into our final, our final song, I Need Thee Every Hour.
children of God, receive this benediction. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, have a great week.